are so glad you tuned in to Harvest Worth Center. We want you to know God has a word for you. We want you to know we serve a God of miracles. We want you to know we have a God that can change your life and change your situation. So today, as you watch this message, it's our desire that you be built up, that you be encouraged, that you be strengthened. We pray today that wherever you are in the world, that this message will encourage you to live your dreams. God bless you. Enjoy this message and this service now in progress. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting.
For God, yes, for, God. Yes, for, God. for all yes, He God. is and for all He's done, go ahead and give Him praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Lord, we just thank you now for this opportunity we have to gather together. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have established the local church where we can come together, where we can encourage one another, where we can be built up and be strengthened. Thank you, Lord that you have given us your word yes. to speak to us, to our lives, to our Thank situations, to our circumstances, yes, yes. that we will walk in all the blessing, yes, the Lord. provision of Almighty yes, God. Yes, Lord. And Lord, so today, those who need strength, may they receive from you. Those that need hope, may they receive from you. Those that need help, may they receive from you. Those that need your grace, May yes, they receive Lord. from yes, you. Yes, God, we yes, are a needy yes, people, Lord. and we come to you and say, God, yes. you are our hope. Yes, you Lord. are our help. Yes, yes, you, are. you are the answer to yes, everything Lord. we face. And so yes, we Jesus. say now, God, accomplish yes, your purpose yes, in yes, our Lord. lives yes, today. Yes, in Jesus' name. Jesus name. And everybody Amen. said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, just before you're seated, I need you to look at five or six people around you and say, I'm so glad to be in church with you today. I am so, so glad, glad to be in church with you today. So glad to be in church with you today. Hallelujah. It's great to see you this morning at Harvest Worship Center. Amen. Just put a great big smile on your face right now. Just put a great big smile on your place. There's a whole bunch of places you could have been, but you chose to be at church. You got a reason to smile today because you're in church. You're with God's people. You're, you're in the presence of Almighty God. He said, we're two or three. There I am in their midst. We know he's everywhere, but he's in a real special way today in this place. Are you ready for what God has for you? Yes. Amen. I think somebody's ready for what God has for them today. I'm ready for what God has. You know, this series that we've been preaching over the last number of weeks, you know, we thought it was over, but it's not quite over yet. You know, it's like a good meal that you sit down to and you finish up and you, you know, you think everything's done and then you realize, wait a second, there's more. And, you know, because I really believe this, God isn't con so concerned about our preaching timetable or our schedule or what we thought it would be as he is concerned about getting you to where he needs you to be to where he needs us to be in our lives and and, and god has incredible things he wants to do in us yes and through us right and he wants to pour dreams into us right. that go beyond anything we could have have hope for right. in our lives right and so sometimes we, you know he just wants to make sure that we keep we get a hold right? get a hold of everything he has for us that that's exactly for us. it See, god has great things for your future yes he does smile at somebody beside you say god's got great things for your future god's got great things for your future and now do you believe that do you really believe it all right that's good because because if you don't believe it then I'll tell you this, you need to hear it today. Yes. God does have great, great things for you. He has great things for your future. And, and it starts with you got to take a hold of it and say, you know what? I can't accept mediocrity because right. that's not what God's called me to. Right. He's called me to a new place right. and he's got great things for you. Right. And here's the thing God has for your future. He's trying to get you ready for better and for best. Yes. Sometimes God is getting us ready for the better things that are coming our way. Right. And so whether there are things in your life that are really good right now, yeah. God's preparing us for better things. Right. 
And maybe there are some areas that are a bit of a challenge right now. And God is preparing us so that we can overcome, get through, and become all that he has called us to be. So that we can reach all that God has for our lives. It's time for us to live the dream and to experience the desires of our heart. Absolutely. And today... There is one thing that we need to know and understand for every single person in this room today. In order to reach your goals and to live out that dream, to live the dreams in your heart, there's one thing every one of us needs if we're going to live God's plan for our life. All right, are you listening to me now? And, and, and it's not just for one person. You know, sometimes we'll speak a word that's for one. But sometimes it's a word for everyone. This is one of these words that is for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're visiting or if you come all the time. It doesn't matter if this is the first time you've tuned in through KBM or you watch us all the time. This is a word for everyone who hears this message. This is an important truth that we want to give you today that will help you to live the dream. And here it is that you need to know when you control your thoughts, you will live the dream. When you control your thoughts, you will live the dream. And what we don't realize is so many times we get distracted with our thoughts. Right. It hinders us right. from living the dream. Yeah. Then we turn around and say, God doesn't care about me. God's doing it for other people, but he doesn't care about me. And the reality is, God wants to work in all of our lives. Right. But we have to understand that if we control our thoughts, we will live the dream. Right. And I will tell you today, that doesn't matter if you've served Jesus for, for 50 years or you served him for a week. This is right. something that we all have to work on every single day in our life. Because the truth is, we're all guilty sometimes. Uh, let me rephrase that. We're all guilty of many times mm -hmm. yeah. letting our thoughts go in a wrong direction. Right. Yeah. And let me tell you this today as yeah. clear as I can. When our thoughts go in the wrong direction, it will impact your life right. and it will impact you fulfilling the right. dreams that God has for you. Right. There are so many people we meet and their life gets stuck in a rut. And when it comes down to it, we need to realize that what we've got to do is control our thoughts if we want to live the dream. See, this is the truth is everybody wants to be successful and move their life forward into great things. Amen. Nobody says, I want to just fail and just stay stuck somewhere, just stay in a mess. Everybody wants to be successful so and move so, their life so forward. So that means everybody hearing this... Uh, word today you want your life to be better than it is right now you, it might be okay but you're thinking but I wouldn't like I wouldn't mind if it was a little better right or maybe it's really challenging you think I need some things to change so I can get to be where I need to go and so what we have to understand I, I think every single one of us in this room we want our life to be better we, that's absolutely true we want to see that improvement so it's interesting because in 1908 a number of years ago there was a man named Napoleon Hill and he wanted his life to be better Okay, he said, so okay, he, my life is okay. My so, life is alright. So, right. some things don't change. 1908. No. This guy's got a desire right. that we all have as well. Right. That we want our life to be, to be better, better than it is right now. Right. And he was trying to determine what steps he needed to take in life to be extremely successful. Okay. And how many? How many think I, I like that too? Okay. I like that too. Okay, that's good. That's almost everybody. That's almost everybody. Good. So I guess, you know, he was kind of considering this and thought, okay, well, if I'm considering what I need to be extremely successful, then my best option is to talk to somebody who is extremely successful. That was a very wise move. That was a good move. Because, listen, sometimes it's frustrating because people will want an answer to a problem, but they'll go to somebody who's never experienced the answer. Right. Right. So you want to fix a marriage problem, but you're going to somebody to talk to who's your best friend who's got a busted marriage. Right. And what can they help you with other than how to bust it? Right. You need to go to somebody who's got success. Sometimes we, we, want to, we want to do well in school, but we're talking to somebody who dropped out and has never known what it takes to succeed right. in school. Yep. And what we have to realize, sometimes we need to talk to people... Right who have experienced success 
in specific areas right. so that they can share with us what they experienced. So, so Mr. Hill did a great thing. He decided right. he's going to talk to somebody who was successful in this area. Right. And so he made arrangements. It took some work and some effort, but he made arrangements to be able to interview Andrew Carnegie, who at that time was the richest man in the world and was a very powerful man. And so he said, look, this guy has, has achieved extreme success. He's powerful, he's respected, and he is, at that time, the richest man in the world. So he went and to have this interview with Mr. Carnegie, and he sat down and he asked them a question, how do I become successful? And so Mr. Carnegie turned around, and he, his answer was a challenge. He told Mr. Hill, you need to continue to do some research on this topic. Oh, wait a sec. See, here's the problem. Sometimes people come for looking for an answer, and they want you to give them an answer. But one of the richest, most powerful men in the world at, at the time, time didn't give him the answer. He said, if you want the answer, here's how you find the answer. See, the problem is that sometimes we do a disservice to our children. We give them all the answers. Uh -huh. And we never teach them how to find the answer. Right. There are some of the things in life we have to learn how to find the answer. So Mr. Hill went to Mr. Carney, asked him this question, how do I become a success? How do I walk in greater things in my life? And Mr. Carnegie doesn't give him the answer. He says, go back and do more research. Do more research. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but if I took all this time, all this effort, all this energy to meet this man, and then he doesn't even tell me the secret answer. <laughs> so I might think. So, instead of getting upset and leaving frustrated, Napoleon Hill decided he was going to take on this challenge that oh, was Oh, he's going to listen to the him. advice. Oh, you wow, that, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Because, you know, so many times people yep. ask you, you give them advice, and then they ignore your advice and still complain about their situation. This all right, all right. Is, so, he, he decided he was going to listen to Mr. Carnegie. He decided, wow. So, he said, I'm going to take on this challenge. And he spent the next 20 years. Wow, he took him serious. Of his life. The next 20 years of his life researching, and he went through interview after interview of the most successful people in the world at that time. And he focused on the elements of personal achieve achievement and success. And so he ended up writing what, you know, now when, when you go into, you know, Indigo or whatever, you see there are like whole sections of self-help books. There are so many self-help books. Well, he ended up writing what was considered one of the very first self-help books. And with all of this research that he had done for 20 years, how to become extremely successful, interviewed all of these successful people. And what the key, one of the key things that he put in this book, in this com compilation of his research, Mr. Hill discovered was this. You need to control your thoughts in order to achieve your desired goals. Okay. So, wow. so, so then if we turn that, if we don't control our thoughts, we, we may not get to our desired goals. But if we want to get to our desired right. goals, doesn't matter today if you're young. Doesn't matter if you're older. Right. If you want to attain your goals, then according to Mr. Hill, right. we've got to control our thoughts. So by looking at so many people over 20 years, right. he came one of his main uh, 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 presupposition was if you don't control your thoughts you cannot achieve, achieve your goals right your thoughts and so his book is actually called think and grow rich and in think and grow rich he states this set your needed thoughts to achieve the desired goals and eliminate all other unnecessary thoughts what you think so you will become wow what you think so you will become. So, 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 so are you happy with where your life is right now? Are you happy with where you are? It is a result of where you've been thinking. Right. Are you happy with your relationships? It's a result of where you've been thinking. Are you happy with your health? It's a result of where you've been thinking. Right. Are you happy with your marriage? 
with your family, it is a result of how you've been thinking. And this is absolutely essential. And what we need to understand, you see, some things change over time. But this research is still applicable today as it was in the 1930s. And the reason why this research is timeless is because it wasn't original with uh, uh, Mr. Hill or with the people he interviewed. This is a biblical principle in all areas of our life. The biblical principle teaches us how you think affects and directs you. Somebody say how you think think affects you you and directs you. you. Now tell the person beside you how you think affects you and directs you. How you think affects you and directs you. But you said, Pastor, but you said this is a biblical principle. Absolutely, there's so many verses. But let me just share one with you right now, found in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. And this is what it says. For as a person thinks in themselves, so they are. So as you think in yourself, according to the Bible, book of wisdom, as you think, so you are. So here's the deal. The Bible in the book of wisdom says how you're thinking, that's what, that's how you are. How's your thoughts? How's your thoughts when you're discouraged? How's your thoughts when you're frustrated? How's your thoughts when you don't like what's going on? And the Bible says how you thinking is how you are. Wow. This is what the Bible wants us to know today, that your thoughts not only impact you, it impacts who you are, impacts where you're going, impacts what you'll do. You become the sum total of your thoughts. Now, now this makes sense because, let me say this, scientific research has determined that people think between 60 and 80,000 thoughts a day. So scientific research saying you have in your head 60 to 80,000 thoughts that come through your head a day. Now, for a parent, have you ever talked to a teenager and said, oh, what do you think about? And they go, nothing. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. Uh, they might not be thinking about anything important or they might not think about anything they want to tell you. But they are thinking about something. 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. Scientific research. If you do, I I did because I was curious, did the math. That means that you actually have a thought every second. So throughout the day, every second, you have some kind of thought going through your head. And so this is... Going through your mind. And this is why Mr. Hill discovered what the Bible already had to say, which is your thinking, 60,000 thought, is going to affect who you are and where you'll be. And so let me say this. Here's my question I have to ask you. Of your 60 to 80,000 thoughts, are they moving you forward or holding you back? Are they whining about your present or advancing you into your future? We spend so much time in our 60, 80,000 thoughts thinking about negative stuff. And then we're all frustrated because why is my life looking like this? Why is my life? Now, I, they're going to put the live screen on. I already told them that today. We're going to put the live screen on, all right? Because I, I want you to be able to see this. This is more important, all right? You don't need just to look at the same thing over and over. All right, so, so follow me now. So here's the thing. Here's the deal. The deal is that in those 60,000 thoughts, they impact your life. Those 60,000 thoughts, they impact who you are. They impact where you're going. Those 60,000 thoughts will chain you up to your present situation. Look at me. Look at me. Ignore what they're doing there. The the 60,000 thoughts will chain you to your present situation or they will move you forward into what God has. And so here's the deal that we have to understand today. That no matter who you are or where you're from, you've got to determine that I'm going to allow my thoughts to, to move me forward. I'm going to not allow my thoughts to hinder me. I'm not going to allow my thoughts to hold me back. But I'm going to allow my thoughts to move me into the great things that God has for me. Right. Controlling our thoughts affects our life. So when we control our thoughts, it affects every area of our life. See, these thoughts that we have affect how we feel about situations 
how we feel about people, how we feel about our own life. Sometimes, you know, we're feeling certain things. Well, I can't help what I feel. But our thoughts affect how we feel. Right. Which affects who we are. And so, so think about it this way. So you came to church today. Now, if you thought, I like going to church. I'm excited about going to church right. this morning because when I go to church, I grow my faith. Right. When I go to church, I learn things that move my life forward. When I go to church, I build relationships. So you right. think those things, and then you know what happens? You come to church, and you are your feelings, your emotions are excited. They're positive. You're feeling like, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm empowered today. I'm encouraged today. I'm inspired today because your thoughts have directed how you feel about the situation. Right. And so now, now, but now here's the challenge for all of us, for every single one in this room, and in, including me, all of us. We all have these positive thoughts that give us positive feelings, but we also have negative thoughts that direct negative feelings and impact who we are and how we live. And so, so let's think about some of the thoughts that we might have during the week that maybe aren't as positive. How about we go to work and we think, my boss doesn't like me. Oh, my boss doesn't like me. And I, or I hate my this boss job. Is just, I hate this job. I hate this job. Hate it. Hate it. Oh, I hate this job. This job, this job just, I just, I, I, I just hate going to work. I don't like doing this. Job. And so then when something happens throughout the day, when some kind of interaction that's a challenge happens with your boss, happens with your coworker, then your negative thought, now what do you feel? You feel angry. You feel like, man, like, I hate this. I'm, and, and your emotion that comes out is anger. Okay, okay. So, so follow this then. If you're an angry person, it means you have an angry thought life. If you're an angry person, it's because you have an angry thought life. And though, what you have is you have all these thoughts. And all of a sudden now, right. there is, the, uh, not all the time, but there's a manifestation of what is in your thought life. Right. These things come out. Or how about something like this? You know, sometimes people think things like, oh, my life is harder than everybody else's. I have such a hard life. We start to think about how difficult our life is, how difficult our situation is. And so then when we see somebody else and they're succeeding, maybe in an area of our life that we're still working on, then what comes out is things like frustration or maybe jealousy about that situation. I feel frustrated. My life is even worse now because, you know, they have something better. But it's because I've been thinking these negative thoughts that even when something good happens to somebody else, my emotion, my feeling is something that comes out as frustration. But I don't think it all the time, Pastor Pam. I don't think it all the time. You know, of the 80,000 thoughts in a day, I might only think it 4,000. I'm doing pretty good, aren't I? I had 76,000 thoughts that were positive. But the problem is, those 4,000 thoughts that were negative manifested in your life right. and produced right. a result that, according to Scripture, is impacting who you are and what you will become. Right. right. This is powerful, Pastor Pam. So these negative thoughts that we experience, they impact our emotions. They impact how we feel about things. And so we have these feelings. And really, these things, they're not healthy for you. And they aren't healthy and helping to move your dream forward. So we take on these things and we start to look at our circumstances, look at situations around us, look at other people around us. And we have these, we are directing our thoughts and thinking these negative things. And now our emotions are lining up with our thought life. And it's causing us not to be who we want to be. But Pam, the you problem know, is, my life is harder than anybody else's life. So it's easy for, for Kells to think positive. It's easy for Damien to think, but you don't know how I live. You don't know what I go through. Right. If you had to live where I had to live, then you'd be having some negative thoughts too. Mm. You are 
not only building your own, you're not only destroying yourself, you've got a shovel and you're building your own grave. You're digging out your grave. So yes, your life might be challenging. Yes, you might have obstacles. Yes, it might not be easy. Right. But let me tell you that, that's exactly when you need to control your thoughts. Right. When it isn't easy, that's when you got to say, I've got to control my thoughts. And, and, and here's reality. You know, you start saying, well, my life's worse than everybody else's. That, that's a huge mistake. Because you really don't know how everybody else's life is. No. You don't know their battles. You don't exactly. know their challenges. You don't know their difficulties. And so you're only looking out the outside, and because they got a nice smile and they put themselves together, you think that means everything's good. Right. But it doesn't necessarily mean that. Right. See, we got to determine that it doesn't matter how bad, bad it is. Because, listen to me, if you're frustrated with your life, that means your thoughts, you're thinking frustrated thoughts. Right. Whatever area of it, your life it is. Right. So my life's not as good as someone else. So I'm thinking frustrated thoughts about right. my family. I'm thinking frustrated thoughts about my relationships. I'm right. thinking frustrated thoughts about my future, my job, my wherever I am. And so right. now I let these frustrated thoughts. And now according to the scripture that we read for you in Proverbs, for as a person thinks of themselves, so they are. And so what you have to understand, you have become what you've been thinking. Right. Whether it's anger, whether it's in frustration, right. whether it's in disappointment. Whether you feel like you have no hope, what right. you've got to understand, it is impacted by your thoughts. Right, exactly. See, and we have to ask ourselves this question. Do I regularly feel angry where you blow up? Or do you regularly feel frustrated where you lash out? Or do you regularly feel discouraged saying, you know what, I just want to give up on this thing? Or do you regularly feel lonely where you think, I just want to cry? When we regularly, when we have these emotions, they're rooted in the thoughts that we are continually allowing to go through our minds. And it will... So this is absolutely... So, so the root of these emotions... Right. Of many of these emotions, not, I can't say 100%, but the root of many of these emotions is really rooted in, in our, our thoughts. thoughts. And right. how, because our thoughts now affect our few, which affects yeah. how we respond, which yes. affects how we live. So our thoughts... Right. have an impact on our right. response. And, and the more that we think about a certain thing, in a way, and the more we filter the information that we receive, the things that people say to us, the things that are going on around us, we filter them through those thoughts. And so if we're having negative thoughts, then when we're having conversations or somebody's talking or we're, you know, we're reading something, we're, we're filtering them through negative, a negative thought, a negative mindset. And so we're seeing things in a way and we're, it's not helping us to move forward in the plans and the purpose that God has for our lives. So, so let me help you today. Do not wait for your situation to change. Are you hearing me? Choose right. to change your thoughts right now. Right. Somebody say, I'm not waiting for my situation to change. I'm not waiting for my situation. But I choose to change my thoughts now. I choose to change my thoughts Say it again. Now. I choose to change my thought now. I choose to change my thoughts now. So here's the problem. Some things we're waiting for something to change. And now we get ourselves more frustrated and more frustrated right, and more right, frustrated right, and more right. frustrated because it's not changing. And what we need to do is change our thoughts. And you'll be surprised the grace, the strength that you have to get through the situation. Right. But it must right. start with change your thoughts right. now. Right. Tell five people, right, I choose to change my thoughts now. 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 This is absolutely essential for us. This is essential if you want to get out of the funk. This is essential if you want to get unstuck. See, so, so last week's message might have encouraged you, inspired you, but you've got to understand, if you want to get unstuck, you've got to change your thinking. You've got to change it. Every time that thought comes up, you've got to change that thought. Every time that thing right. comes to your head, change that right. thought. Right. Pastor, I don't know how to change the thought. Well, here's, you got a real advantage today. If you serve Jesus, 
if you're a Christian, you got a super advantage. Because now all of a sudden, now I can put my mind on Christ. Right. I can put it on who he is and yes. what he said. Yes. I can begin yes. to worship. I can yes. begin to pray. Yes. I can begin to talk to him. Yes. So, so let me tell you this. Listen to me. When our thoughts are going in the wrong direction, it's because we have not learned to control them. Right. And out of control thoughts means out of control life. life. So as a believer, I choose that when the thought comes, I take control. When the negative thing comes, I take control. And I choose to put my mind on something else even when I don't feel like it. Sit down for a second. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Some of you in your life, you have made some decisions you wish you could repeat and redo. Because in hindsight, you realized mm, wasn't the best decision. And what we have to realize that what got us to that place was our thinking. And so as we make a choice to say, David, I'm going to change my thinking. It will limit how many times we get in those places where we wish we hadn't done that. So instead of justifying why we're thinking that way, instead of saying, well, I I think this way because we need to stop justifying why we have the thought and start changing the thought. It's not good to say, well, listen, we can all justify why we have crazy thoughts. And, 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 And none of you are on your own. You all have crazy thinking sometimes. Me too. We all have crazy thinking sometimes. But the deal is we have to make a choice that when crazy thinking comes, we deal with the crazy thinking. We got to say this thought isn't going to move me forward. This thought isn't going to help me. Listen, listen. This thought doesn't line up with the word. So guess what I've got to do? When the thought doesn't line up with the word, I've got to change the thought. Somebody shout, I gotta change some thoughts. I gotta change some thoughts. Or it's gonna ruin my life. Or it's gonna ruin my life. Now let me tell you this, it may not ruin everything. It might only ruin your relationship. It might only ruin your job. It might only ruin your prosperity. It might only ruin your health. The problem is you can have a number of good thoughts, but those ones you hold the wrong thoughts in can negatively impact that area of your life. Pastor Bam, this is so essential for all of us to get a hold of today. Because if we are going to live the dream, we've got to understand what the word says on this part. And I think when we think the wrong thoughts in one area, we think, well, it's just one area, but there tends to be an overflow into other areas of our life. Right. And so we have to learn how we control our thought life. And, you know, maybe maybe you're listening to this message and you're saying, well, that's, that's easy for you to say or that sounds good, but my situation is so difficult that it, I can only think negative about it. Sometimes we're in a situation so let's be practical that's a then. difficult situation. Maybe you're in a, a, a situation where, you know, people say, well, my marriage is so difficult. My job is my so My job bad. is so challenging. My health. My health. I'm facing things that I just couldn't even imagine that I would be facing. We, we face these things and we think there's nothing positive that I can think about them. But so then what can, do we do? We can say, I can choose to pray about the situation. Right there, you begin to change the way your thought pattern is. So, so, so a practical step is that, 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 that we can pray. Right. Here, here's, I think here's a practical step. I think that every eight hours each day, we should set an alarm for, for your, your waking hours. She should set an alarm for about five minutes. Before the hour ends and say, I'm going to use the alarm to remind myself to put my thoughts right. Mm. Now, listen to me. The more your thoughts are struggling, maybe the more battles you're facing, the more difficult times you're going through, the more you need to do this. The more you need to say, put my thoughts in the right direction. And so I think a real practical thing we need to do is set an alarm for five minutes and then take two or three minutes and ask yourselves, how am I feeling right now? And then, did I allow myself to think negative thoughts this hour? And if I did, realize that if those negative thoughts contradicted God's word or God's purpose, I need to repent right then. Right. How am I feeling? 
And did the thoughts oppose God or his words? And if they did, then it was sin. And it was sin that will hinder me. I, I realize you had a thousand reasons for thinking it. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying that I wouldn't even have thought the same thing, but I've got to say, God, forgive me for those thoughts because those thoughts negatively impacted me. Right. Right. And so what we have to understand is that my thoughts right. impact me. So, so I set the alarm. How am I feeling? Well, did I allow a negative thought? And then, then how can I change these thoughts and replace them with good thoughts or better thoughts? Listen, Isaiah 55, 9 says, my ways are higher than your ways yes. and my thoughts are higher than And God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Right. Higher means supreme and un, uh, unobstructed. So our problem is that so many times we see the obstacles. Right. We see the obstructions. The thoughts, but God's thoughts yeah. are supreme and they have no obstructions. They have right. nothing that gets in the way of them. So God's thoughts are not obstructed by sin. God's thoughts are not obstructed by people. Right. God's thoughts are not obstructed by circumstances. Right. His thoughts are above all these things. Right. And when you think his thoughts, you rise above your problem. If we want to rise above our problem, then guess what that means? That means, guess what? I've got to change my right. thinking. Right. So, so the problem is that, that sometimes we give in to our thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even tell you how many times I've been in the hospital with somebody, and they're in a difficult situation, and they were fighting, fighting, fighting. They're hanging on. But at the point they got tired and yeah. gave up yeah. the fight... Yeah. They died quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So even in the midst of health issues, yeah. how we think sometimes we give up. Right. We just give up. Nothing I can do. Oh, well, can't change it. And we give up and we give up. We give over to the problem, whatever it is, and we see it manifest in our lives. Right. But what you have to realize is God's ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And, and so now, now the best way I know um, that, that, I, that I know to think God's thoughts is to memorize verses. Put them inside of you. The Bible will build you up. You know, it says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. I put the word in me. It keeps me. It protects me. It builds me up. It strengthens me. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by. So you need faith today. Then put the word in you. You need strength today. Put the word in you. You don't want to give in to sin today. Put the word in you. I mean, every Sunday we declare at the end of the service, Joshua 1.8, and Joshua said that he will meditate on, on the, the word, word of God day and night. So, so, then so he we, will make his way prosperous and he will have good, good success. success. So, so here's the deal. We say this scripture every, every, single, every right. single week. Right. And some of you have let it go over here. Oh, it's just that passage. But you got to, Joshua said, here is the deal. Meditate on it. Right. Think about it. Recount right. it. Put right. it in your head. Because right. it will change those right. negative thoughts, thoughts into prosperous thoughts. Right. And it will cause you to be prosperous right. and have success. success. See, Wow, so thing. just a So Joshua is saying, Joshua is saying that you want to have prosperous and have good success. Right. Put your thoughts on God's thoughts, according to Isaiah. Because his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Right. So now I put my thoughts on God's thoughts. I put the word in me. Right. Now, it, what does it do in my life? It produces success. Yes. So now if I want success, what do I do? I put my thoughts on what God says. Right. And it's not just by success by other people's definitions. It's success by what God says is success. Right. It will cause you to prosper, but you've got to make a determination that right. guess what? I'm making a choice to put my thoughts on God's right. word. Right. And let me tell you this. The more you battle, the more difficult it is, the more challenging it is, 
the more, the more uh, things that, that just inside of you say, I can't do it, the more I've got to put the word in me. Put it in me. Put it in me. Put it alive in me. Somebody say, put the word in you. Put the word in you. See, if our thoughts affect how we feel, and we have negative thoughts, and we feel all these negative things, then if we change our thoughts, and we put the word in us, then it affects how we feel. And now we have joy. We have peace because we know, okay, God, I'm trusting you, so I'm in peace. We have hope for our future. We, we continue, we change the way we feel about our life. So yes, we may even still have challenges. We may, we may even still have to come, overcome some of those obstacles to get to all that God has for us. But now we're not holding back in frustration and anger and disappointment and all of those feelings. But now we are walking in hope and in joy and in peace and in strength. And we are changing literally the way we feel and how we respond, who we are, by our thoughts. Turn to the person beside you say, your thoughts will change your life. Your thoughts will change your life. Yes, they will. So, our, so how you think affects how you feel. And how you think also directs how you live. It will direct your life. So here's the thing, over this, the course of this, this series, we've given some very powerful principles, you know, and if you miss any, I encourage you to go back online and watch it because they're powerful, life-changing principles. But we've given you all these practical steps to live the dream. But the truth is this, you can do it all right and still get it wrong. Right. So you can create the plan, you can work hard, you can stay focused, you, but you can still miss it. And you think, well, how is that possible? How can I make a plan but still miss reaching my dream? How can I work hard but still miss it? Here, is it, here it is, because thoughts determine direction. Right. You can have a plan but still have the wrong thoughts. You right. can work hard but still have the wrong thoughts. Thoughts determine direction. Somebody say, thoughts determine direction. Thoughts determine direction. Turn the person beside you say, your thoughts determine your direction. Your thoughts determine your direction. Our thoughts determine our direction. So the Bible says it this way. In Proverbs 4.23, it says, be careful how you think. Well, wait, wait, wait. Be some careful. Think, well, that is my Bible, Bible. Okay, okay. Well, what, what be careful. It? Be cautious. Okay, another. Be aware. Okay, be careful what you think. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. What, what, it, what does the Bible say? Your life is shaped by your what? And the Bible tells us to be careful what we do. What we think. Be careful how we act. What we think. Oh, that's a different verse. This verse says, be careful how you think. For your life is shaped by your thoughts. By your thoughts. So your life looks exactly how you think. Mm -hmm. Your life is shaped by it. Your life is directed by it. Your life is directed by the way you think. So, so we believe this in our own lives. Yep. Yes, true. And I'll tell you this, my, our life is shaped by our, our thinking. Yes. So when I have a health problem, I don't go, nothing I can do. We have different kind of bodies and it's easy for you. No way. Guess what we do? Don't you notice, but uh, Pastor, I had to buy some new clothes. Where it didn't start that it just, I prayed about it. I thought it. I worked hard at it. And I wouldn't let another thought cross my mind. I just kept going. And I couldn't say, well, that's as good as it gets. I'm like, no, I'm not stopping until I get to where I need to go. Right. And so what we got to understand is, you got to be careful. The scripture says, be careful how you think. Right. And let me tell you this, because some of the way we thought has shaped our lives in a negative way. Mm -hmm. And we all have those experiences. All of us, we could share stories, but it started with our thinking. Right. And it shaped us. And it shaped how our life looks. Right. And some of our lives look in a way that we don't like. Right. Mm. 
Sometimes we did things rash that we shouldn't have done because it was here and here and here. And somebody says, oh, that just came out of the blue. No, it didn't. You thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And finally, it came out of you. And now it's affected and shaped your life permanently because you had these thoughts going through your head over and over and over. And you controlled yourself. Good for you. You controlled yourself. You controlled yourself. You held on to it. You didn't. But then because you didn't control your thought, you controlled your talk but not your thought. You only could control it for so long and then it came out of you. It was not a rash. It was not accident. It came out what you were thinking. And now what we're thinking has shaped our life. It shaped who we are. It shaped where we're going. And listen to me. Some of the things that our life has shaped, you can't undo. Some of those things that you're thinking are shaped, they are what they are, and there's no way to get away from the effects of them. And this is why the Bible says, be careful what you think. Be careful what you think. Be careful what you think. Don't let your mind just go out there. Be careful what you think. Be careful what you think. Be careful what you think. I love the word. It's so practical. Be careful what you think, for your life is shaped by your thoughts. Everybody say, be careful what you think. Be careful what you think. For your life is shaped by your thoughts. For your life is shaped by your thoughts. Say it again. Be careful what you think. Be careful how you think. For your life is shaped by your thoughts. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23. Now, here's why. I, you know why I did it? I did it that way on purpose, so you'll remember the reference. Four, two, three. What comes after? There's two. Comes after two. Three. Four. Then four. So four, four, in this case, four, two, three. I do tricks like that all the time to help me to remember things. All right? I'm just giving you a little trick. So I want to come back to the scripture. I remember. What's the reference? Proverbs what? Four, two, three. There you go. See, you remembered. It worked. Okay, good. There we go. Proverbs 4, 23. Be careful what you think. Right. Because it's going to shape your life. And you can't get away from it. It's true. This is not just for young or just for old. It's all of us. Right. Your thinking is shaping your life. Right. Your thinking right now is shaping your life. Your thinking is shaping your present. And listen to me. Your thinking is shaping your future. Right. Your thinking is causing you to give up. Directing. Or your yeah. thinking is causing you to keep on going. Your thinking right now is shaping your life. Right. Your thinking is directing your life. So yeah. we've got to realize, according to this text, right. that we need to hear what the word says right. and be careful what you think. Tell five people around you, be careful what you think. 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 So your thinking directs the course of your life. So if you want your life to go in a good direction, in a positive direction, then you have to start thinking in that direction. Sometimes we're thinking we want to go this direction, but we got our thoughts in reverse. Right. We got to get our thoughts out of reverse and put them in the same direction that we want our life to go. Right. If we want to overcome this challenge, we have to think overcoming thoughts. Right. If God is for me, then who could be against me? That's right. an overcoming thought. If we say, you know what, I need to be empowered in this situation, then we have to declare, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Think That's empowering an empowering thoughts. thought. But, 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 Pastor Pam, how many times can I think that same thought? Well, how many over. times are you thinking the exact same negative thought? Over, I, can't right. I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. So it's okay to repeat the negative thought, but it's not okay to repeat the, the positive, positive thought? thought. Mm. Isn't the devil a liar? Yes. He's like, no, don't keep thinking that same thought over and over, that positive one. Come on, do something new, something different. But it's okay to think the negative thought over and over and over and over and keep beating the dead horse when it's never going to get up. So we've got to put it in our head. Man, we need empowered. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Hallelujah. If we're saying, I don't want to be defeated, then we need to think victorious thoughts. You know, thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph. Wait, wait. How many times he causes us to triumph? Always. The word says that God the always causes says, us to triumph. Doesn't matter what it is. Always. Doesn't yes. matter what you're going through. Yes. I will triumph. I will triumph. According to the word, I will triumph. 
Well, think about your battle right now and declare the word over it. Think about your challenge right now. Declare the word. I always triumph. Think about your challenge and declare. Think about your problem and declare. Think about your difficulty and declare. Think about what that thing is that's trying to beat you down and declare. Now somebody give them a praise right now. I may not always triumph on my own, but in Christ, with his help, with his strength, I always, I love that word, always. I always triumph. Hallelujah. I can hardly say that without smiling. I always triumph. Now put that Mr. Negative Thought in your head. Right, right. That's amazing. These are the thoughts we continually, so when we're challenged, when we're going through things, and I mean, we, we've said it before, we, those things run through our mind, but we have to take a hold of them and say, I'm going to declare, I'm going to believe, I'm going to think these thoughts. You choose, you choose. Not somebody else. You choose what thoughts you will allow to grow and mature in your mind and what thoughts you're going to cut off when they come in. We choose that. We have a choice. We can take control and say, you know what? I'm going to allow the thoughts that God says about me to be the ones that will mature. I'm going to allow the things that God says about this situation and about my life to be the, allow the ones to grow and the other ones, I'm cutting them off. So listen to me. Thinking good thoughts doesn't mean the situation will turn or turn right, right. away. But it will mean that you will respond right and you will be victorious exactly. in the situation. So just because right. you think a good thought, positive confession says, think it and it comes to pass. This is not it. Let me tell you this. You might think a good thought and it never changes. But here's what will change. You and right. your response will right. change. Right. Here's what will change. Yes. Your future yes. and your destiny right. will change. Here's yes. what will change. It will move you forward in the right, right. direction instead right. of getting you into a trap that you wish you hadn't got into now that has negatively shaped your life. So what we have to understand, what is absolutely essential, that you can say the right thing, you can feel the right thing, and it might not change. Mm-hmm. You're not God. I'm not God. I can't tell you how everything's going to change. But I'll tell you this, I've seen all kinds of things God answer prayer. I've seen all kinds of things God turn around. I've seen all kinds of things God work out a miracle. But I'll tell you this, I've seen all kinds of things that I was trying to control my thoughts and I stayed in the mess for a long time. That's a long time. See, I don't want you to walk out of here and think, well, I thought a good thought and it didn't change. Because right. it isn't about, it isn't, yes, circumstances, yes, situations, yes, my thoughts affect that. But you've got to understand, what I, what I think right directs me. Right. Whether that specific situation changes or not, it directs me because it keeps me in the right direction. It keeps me in the right path. It keeps right. me going in the right way. Right. But I've got to make a determination in my heart that I've got to think right in the yes. process. So that the situation, even if it's a negative situation, it doesn't bring destruction to your life and to who you are. Right. When we're thinking negatively, what that situation that you will eventually overcome, things will eventually shift or change. But if we are thinking consistently the wrong things, then that thing can cause us to self-destruct. Right. That's not God's plan for your life. Right. Somebody say destruction is not God's plan for me. Destruction is not God's plan. So we choose these things that we thought. This is, the Apostle Paul says it like this. He says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Okay, wait, wait. How do we we become transformed? By the renewing of your mind. And so if we don't renew our mind, 
every single day. And according to what we understand by science now, I'm going to switch it from every day to every second. Right. If you don't renew your mind every second, then you will be conformed and not transformed. Right. So you got to renew. Oh, man, I'll tell you this. This setup for this sermon today is, should, uh, listen, the first three-minute introduction should change your life right there. Everything else is just bonus on that. Right, right. That first three minutes of understanding what we told you about thoughts, according to science now, backs it, it should change everything in your life right now. But what we've got to understand is now, so, okay, every second now. Right. If I don't want to be conformed to the pattern of this world, what's the pattern of this world? Have a problem. Uh, pattern of the world. It's a pattern of the world. Well, I feel like it. I just can't help my feelings. Right. Pattern of this world. Right. Pattern of the world. What's well, just who I am? It's how I made. Pattern of the world. So we are not to be conformed to the pattern, but be transformed. How do we become transformed? Renew our mind. Not just on Sunday, but renew our mind every second of every single day. Somebody say, renew your mind every day. Turn to the first side, you say, renew your mind every second of the day. Renew your mind every second of the day. See, renewing our mind is this. It means replacing it with something completely different. And so if our minds and our thoughts are not going in the direction that we want our life to go in, then we replace it with something completely different. And so what are we replacing our thoughts with today? It's time to start thinking the right things about your job. You know that the Bible says that God has given me the ability to produce wealth. So when I go to work, I can declare, you know what? I'm going to this job and I have the ability to produce wealth today. Yeah, and that thought is going to keep me from being poor, right, broke, bro? or in debt. Right. We have to renew the minds, renew our right minds about, about our spouse. You know, the Bible says this, rejoice in the wife of your youth. So instead of complaining and, and caring, say, I'm going to rejoice today in what's happening in my life. Write thoughts about God. Write thoughts about the house of God. I'm excited because when I said, you said, you know, yeah, I'm ex I was excited to come to church because the word of God says it better is one day in God's house than living a thousand days anywhere else. Right. I'm renewing my mind about those things, right. having the right thoughts about my future. God, you've got a plan to prosper me and not to harm me. So my future is one of prosperity in, my, in every part of my life. It's renewing. It's changing. It's saying, I'm going to rearrange, make a whole rearrangement of my thought life. And as I do, I'm directing my life now to peace. I'm directing my life to hope for better things. I'm directing my life to expectancy for God's blessing in my life. I'm directing my life for the good things that God has for my life. We direct our life forward as we direct our thoughts in the right, in the right way. Absolutely. And so here, okay, so today is we want to renew our minds. Here's so we're almost done. We're almost practical done. Practical we action. We're going to wrap up, up with I, this. It's gone so fast. I, mean, I feel like we just, and it's like time's over. Okay. Thumbs up. We're oh. going let, to, let's, let's give you one more practical action. How do we do this? These are practical things because sometimes we say, yes, I want to do that. But then we leave and we're facing a situation or we, or we have a decision to make, whatever it might be. So here's a practical thing. Ask yourself these questions. When thoughts are going through my mind, ask yourself, where is this thought leading me? If I keep thinking this thought, is it going to direct me to victory, to success, to peace, to joy, to expectation for good things? Is this thought going to lead me in the direction I want my life to go? Ask yourself, will this thought get me where I need to be in life? Is this thought building me up? Or is it tearing me down? Ask ourselves these practical questions. Does this thought reflect what God says about me, about my situation, about my future? And if it does, good, then keep on thinking that thought. And if it doesn't, say, guess what? That's the thought that I need to kick out of my mind and choose to change my thoughts. The one thing, you may not have control over your situation. You may not have control over other people around you and the things that they might be doing. But the one thing that you have complete control over today is the way you 
think. You can, according to the word of God, you can control your thoughts. You can renew your mind. You can't control you can life. You change it you and direct it. You can't control every situation. You can't control situations. All kinds of things happen that are completely people. out of control. You can't control the traffic. Right. You can't control what's going on around you. There's all exactly. kinds of things you can't control. But you can control and your, your thoughts. Mind. They won't shape your life, but your thoughts will yes. shape your life. Yes. As we think the right thoughts, we need to declare, I'm not going to let my situation or individuals shape my life, but my thoughts will change my life. Now, now here's the reality. I believe that there are some people here today and you felt frustrated with the overall course of your life. That you've wondered, why does every day seem to be a battle? Why do circumstances always be to seem to be so stressful and weighing me down? Why do people seem to be against me? Why does it seem like things never turn around in my direction? Yes, you have outward obstacles. We all have things that we cannot control. Their outward challenges, obstacles. But the greatest challenge that we can overcome today, that we can turn things around in how we feel and how we walk and the direction we take is in our mind. Today is a day to choose to change your thought life, to direct yourself in the plan and the purpose that God has for you. As we control our life, we control, as we control our thoughts, we control the direction of our life. Amen. And today, you can control your thoughts. And you can move your life into all that God has for you. Today, you can live the dream as you control your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want to do. I know our time is over, so this is what I want to do. I want to declare, I want to have a declaration. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say it. And then if you agree it, I want you to repeat it a second after me, all right? So first I'm going to say it, listen to it, and then, then we'll repeat it together. I choose to think positive thoughts. Now, if you agree. I choose to think positive thoughts. I choose to think on God's words, God's words, and not the words of other people. I choose to think on God's words and not the words of other people. I choose to replace negative thoughts about myself and my situation with what the Bible says. I choose to replace negative thoughts about myself and my situation with what the Bible says. I choose today. I choose today. To control my thoughts. To control my thoughts. And be victorious. And be victorious. I will shape my life. I will shape my life. In a way. In a way. That I can live my dreams. That I can live now, my dreams. Now if you believe it, go ahead and let God know. I'm taking you in your word today. Amen. So here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna, to uh, just give our closing things in just one moment. But just before I do that, you're here today. You need to know God's got great plans for you. God wants you to live the dream. But it starts here. Not only does it start here, it finishes here. I got to be determined now. I got to make a choice now. And, and so I feel like today, we made this declaration, but I feel like today we can't close without praying. I feel like for some of us today, you say, Pastor, I've been doing, I do pretty good on my thoughts. But there's one area of my life, and for each of us, it could be something different. There's an area of my life where my thoughts are out of control. And it's hindering me. Pastor, I've not really concentrated recently on, on these negative thoughts that have come into me. And they've come into me my, based on my feelings, based on my emotions, based on my circumstance, based on my difficult situation I'm walking through. Negative thoughts come, and instead of dealing with them in the right way, I just kept thinking of them over and over and over. And some of you thought about it all night long. You couldn't sleep, and you let that negative thought run in your head all night long. It kept going and going and going and going and going and going. And it literally planted root in you. Today's your day to break it. Today's the day to say, God, forgive me for letting that thought run through my head that doesn't line up with your word, doesn't line up with the prophetic plan over my life. Today, I take control over that negative thought. Today, I determine and I'm going to make a choice that I 
take it. But listen, in a moment, I'm going to ask us to bow our heads and close our eyes. And, then when I, and I'm going to stop talking for a second. But if you've had some things that you've let negative thoughts go over and over and over, maybe it's kept you up at night, maybe it's vexed you, maybe it's frustrated you, maybe it's impacted you, then I'm going to give you a minute, not right this second, but in a minute, I'm going to tell you when. I want you to pray and say, God, forgive me of that thought. God, I, I, I repent of that thought. Repent means that I turn and go the right direction. So when I say repent, what I'm saying is I'm no longer going to think that way, but I'm going to turn and think the right way about these things. I'm going to think what you have to say. And, and, and here's the thing. If you say, well, you know, my thinking is just perfect, then you mustn't have a pulse today. We all have some things. And this is why it's, it's work. 80,000 thoughts in a day. And that, and you got that person around you is such an idiot. Don't tell me you never had that thought run through your mind. I don't believe you. Because I know you. And you know me too. <laughs> but we have to say God we're going to walk in this thing God we need your help this, this is so absolutely powerful today Yes. listen to me please I want you to walk in all that God has for you I want you to live the dream but it can't just happen by a prayer or a magic wand. It starts with our thinking. Here's where it starts. And today's a day. Don't wait till tomorrow to start. All right, I'm going to fix my thinking. No, today you make the choice. Right now. Amen. Now is the appointed time. So, so in a moment, I'm going to pray. But I, I need somebody to say, today's the day I'm starting. Today's the day I'm making up my mind. Today's the day that, you know, I might have had 4,000 of the 80,000 under control, but I'm taking control of the four today. I'm not going to let that one area shape my life. Amen. I'm not going to let that one way shape my life. I'm going to shape it according to God's word, God's promises, God's best, God's yes. blessing. For I choose today to control yes. my thoughts. Sin won't rule. Sickness won't rule. Disease won't rule. Destruction won't rule. I will let the word of God and Jesus Christ be the king and rule in my life. Oh, this is for somebody right now. Some of you, you've been in a generational thing and you have mindsets in you that have been there from generation to generation. Some of you have literally you have a poverty mindset because your parents had a poverty mindset. And maybe even your grandparents had it. And, and I realize that, that if you're seeing poverty come from generation to generation to generation, right. you got to say, there's a whole bunch of things that are inside of my thinking process. I, oh, this is for somebody right now. Yes. This has nothing to do with this sermon. This is for somebody right now. And you got to be determined, today, I'm going to stop that. Stop today, you know what? Yes. I love the people. I love the people, but the thought was wrong. I love the people, but the thought hindered me. And so now I better, if, if, if there's poverty, I better start putting in me what the Word of God says about His provision in my life. If there's poverty, if there's a generational poverty thing, then I got to start putting in me what God says about His provision, what God says about finance, what God says about money. I got to put it in and replace that old thinking. I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you this. There's some of you right now in this room and there's generational things and you look and you see it. Maybe it's in health. Maybe it's in finances. Maybe it's in relationships and you see it happen from one generation to the next generation. You have to determine today. I've got to take those old thinking. I've got to put it out and I've got to start to control. And, and it's easy. It's easy to control it when you've had a good example. It's much harder when it's normal for your family. And some of you have had some things that are normal for your family, but dysfunctional according to the Word of God. Amen. And listen, 
Some of those things are obvious to people around you. And so you might think, well, I'm all right. Yeah. We're looking going, that's not all right. You think that's, that you think that's what God has? That's not what God has. Time to change it today. Yes. Time to take control of it today. Amen. And so, so I'm going to give you a second. If, if, if you've allowed some thoughts to run through your head, in a moment, I'm going to do that. And now I want you to do that prophetic piece that God just put in my heart. If there's a generational thing that's in your family that, that you see from generation, then I'm going to ask you to say, God, I, I, I repent of that for or I've allowed it into my life. And I break that thing off me and I choose that I'm going to walk in a new direction yes. in my thinking yes. starting today. All right. So now the team's just going to sing softly. I'm only going to leave it for a minute. Not even. I'm going to leave it for 30 seconds right now. And I want you to begin to say to God, God, I'm going to change it. If that's your desire, whether you're in this auditorium, whether you're watching us today live on the Internet, I want you to begin to say, God, I changed that thinking today. I repent of it. I'm going to go in the right direction. It's starting right now. That's it. God's listening to you. God's hearing that prayer right now he's hearing that meditation of your heart is that really what you want god wants to do it for you god wants to help you god wants to give you the holy spirit to empower you and to enable you as you say yes to him today right now all across this room as we say yes right now that's it chains are falling off right now oh that doesn't mean another negative thought's never going to come to your mind it is but that 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 thing that you can't control, it's breaking right now. It's breaking right now. It's breaking off you. It's breaking off that situ situation. It's breaking off that circumstance. That's it. Take control of it today. Take control of what God has. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, hallelujah. I can literally see right now that God is beginning to shape some lives in some new ways. Hallelujah. I can begin to see right now that God is beginning to shape some direction in a new way. My God, I can see right now prophetically over all kinds of people. I can just begin to see things are beginning to turn. Things are beginning to shift. God is about ready to move you forward. Some of this may not happen tomorrow. Some of this may take weeks and months and years. But I'm telling you, there's a shifting happening right now. There's a change happening right now. My God, yeah. hallelujah. As you're saying yes to God, things are turning. As you're saying yes to God, things are shifting right now. Yes. Now, if this is your desire, I want you to put your hands in the air right now. God, I'm going to take control of those 80,000 thoughts. Now, God, every hand that's raised right now. God, I pray for them right now. Yes, Lord, I thank you that they've turned from the negative thoughts yes. and they're going to line themselves up with your word. Yes, they're going to line themselves up yes, with your de declaration over their yes, lives. Lord, they're going to line yes, themselves Jesus. up with the promises of God, yes. the purposes of God, yes. the will of God. Lord, I pray for each one with their hands raised right now. Right. And as they say yes to you, we Holy yes. Spirit, come yes. and help them. Holy Spirit, them. come and empower them. Yes, Lord. Lord, they can't do it on their own, but the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into all yes, truth Lord. you promise you'd do it so lead us now guide us now empower us now help us now yes. enable us now that we will be the people you've called us to be and if that's your desire go ahead and give jesus a shout of praise yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. thank you jesus Hallelujah. somebody's got it today Somebody's got it today. Yes, oh God. Somebody's got it right now. Some things are beginning to shift. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Thank oh God. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, oh God. Thank you, Lord God. We receive Woo. your word this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 You're worthy, Thank Jesus. You, Jesus. We praise we you, Lord Jesus. Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Jesus. We worship you, Lord. God. We worship you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank we you, thank you, Lord, Jesus. for the victory. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for your love.
thank you, Lord God, for the change of heart, my God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. we seal. Yes. The title of the Holy Spirit, we seal now the work of the Spirit of God. Yes, Lord. In his drawing and his speaking. Yes. And in all that he's accomplished in our lives today. Yes, in Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 Everybody say amen. 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 Go ahead and give God praise all across we the thank earth. You, Lord God. Yes, we God. bless your name. Yes, Lord God. We thank, thank you, Jesus. Lord God, for yes, the victory. God. Come on, we have the victory in yes, Jesus' Lord. name. Yes, 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 We're more than conquerors yes, in Christ Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus. Oh, we bless your name. Say transformation is taking place. Transformation is taking place. Transformation, transformation is taking place. Your mind is being removed. That means there's a transformation taking place in your life and in your in your situation. Things outside may not be turning around, but the things inside are shifting and changing. There. We are so glad today that you've watched this message. We pray that this sermon will encourage you. If you have a problem, a battle, a challenge, please email us today. We're happy to pray for you. We serve the God of miracles, and we believe God can bring a miracle in your life and in your situation. Today, whatever it is, whatever you're going through, God is bigger, God is greater, and God is able. If you're ever in town, in the greater Toronto area, please let us know in advance. We'd love to save you a seat right up front and welcome you here to Harvest Worship Center. We're so glad you tuned in today. God bless you. Have a great day.